Today, we're getting into the revenge of Tiamat because she's like the greatest kaiju or one of the greatest kaiju in the MonsterVerse right now. Then Godzilla killed her, but there's like speculation on if she'll be back. She has like crazy regeneration abilities and that new game that just came out has like Tiamat having a child. So there, there's ways she could come back. I'll tell you what though, she better freaking return because she died way too silly in that last Godzilla movie. Either way, leave a like, subscribe to Goji Center and let's get into it. Those of you who watched GXK and witnessed this scene may have probably thought that Godzilla finally put an end to this rivalry. Here at Goji Center, we also thought the same. However, new updated information on this rivalry has been revealed, not only making the history of this rivalry more interesting, but also laying bare the fact that this war between Tiamat and Godzilla is not over. Ooh. On the contrary, this conflict between two Apex Titan species has just begun. Subscribe to not miss any of these episodes discussing your favorite MonsterVerse Kaiju. And now, let's get into this rivalry. Goji Center has talked a good bit about Titanus Tiamat already, from first discussing how it almost defeated Godzilla in Godzilla Dominion, discussing its newly revealed Titan dossier, up until her execution depicted in Godzilla Kong The New Empire. For a Titan that was extremely powerful on paper, many were baffled upon witnessing how easily Godzilla dispatched this kaiju. Seemingly, at least. At this point, it was easy to think that this was the ultimate end of Tiamat. But no, today we are going to bring up two brand new and official bits of information, storyline, and lore that more or less tells us that this feud between the Sea Serpents and Godzilla is far from over. In the new graphic novel MonsterVerse Declassified, we get some information about Tiamat that explains how she turned from this to this. And a very interesting detail at the end of the story, and bad news for Godzilla. In this graphic novel, we are introduced to some history regarding Tiamat. Here, we see her in the same form as when she appeared in Godzilla Dominion. Blue and purple scales with translucent fins, wings that acted as flippers for navigation underwater. The book depicts the many instances throughout history where Tiamat would purposefully attack human civilizations over time. Our best guess here is that Tiamat would develop an acquired taste for attacking humanity, earning her the title of Destroyer seen in Tiamat's Monarch Dossier. As we reach the modern era, Tiamat would continue her warpath, disrupting human civilization, war operations, and ultimately immortalizing her in legends and myth. We covered the majority of this a few days ago in another video, but it's still very beautiful to see. Plus, Goji center has got that action voice that makes comics seem crazy. You know what I mean? I'm into it right now. <laughs> but what of her evolution? After the events of Godzilla Dominion, after Godzilla kicked her out of his former lair, Tiamat began looking for a new place to thrive, making her way to the Arctic Ocean. Now, those who have seen Godzilla Kong will recall a few things about this location. In the MonsterVerse, this place served as a stockpile of radiation courtesy of solar energy, making it one of the largest reservoirs of solar radiation on the planet. Space and is crazy. Tiamat was here to take possession of it. Of course, another Titan would have already been here, and the fact that this Titan was here may explain why Godzilla hasn't previously taken possession of this place earlier. Can I just say, the concept of a Titan starfish-like creature is the coolest freaking idea I've ever heard, and the greatest way for a kaiju to receive regeneration abilities. Like, that's genius. In this graphic novel, we find Tiamat entering this icy cave when all of a sudden another titan taking the form of an echinoderm quickly grabs Tiamat and starts a battle that would end badly for the defeated titan. This titan remains unnamed for now. Despite this, we must mention that this creature does have some strong resemblance with a few screenshots taken from Godzilla King of the Monsters, Ooh. resembling those images of Titanus Typhon. Ooh. This isn't fully confirmed yet. During the battle, this creature shoots out a hot, viscous, bioluminescent substance. The side effects of getting stained by this is burns and some corrosive damage. No, but that crap burns like hell if you step in it in the Kong game. It's crazy. Managing to eat through Tiamat's armor. Woo! Tiamat escapes the Echinoderm's grasp and begins a deadly counterattack, swimming rapidly around this creature, disorienting it, and this time ensnaring the starfish. With its bladed fins and strong serpentine body, Tiamat manages to rip the echinoderm right in half, sending its severed body down into the sea floor. What this a way to go! This established Tiamat as the proprietor of this energy source, and here we see that she wasted no time and surrendered herself to the effects of this energy source. Similar to how Godzilla allowed himself to be engulfed by layers of ice and bioradiation phenomena, Tiamat cocooned herself in her new lair and would over time evolve into a different form 
evolving into a titan with many more bladed fins, four appendages, and a magenta bioluminescent glow reminiscent of the energy stored here, and capable of inheriting some defensive traits of the titan that used to thrive in this location. In the newly released console game Kong Survival Instinct, we witness Tiamat once again, this time taking on her new form and using this same weapon, a pink viscous corrosive substance capable of burning through hardened armor and organic substances. Shameless plug time, if anyone hasn't actually seen this gameplay, I posted a full video basically just of all the kaiju scenes on my other channel. This game got so much hate for no reason because most of the people playing it don't really appreciate the kaiju. They just wanted like cutting edge graphics and stuff like that. I thought it was beautiful though. So, what does this evolution have anything to do with the continued rivalry between Tiamat and Godzilla? Except for that one scene right there, Kong does defeat Tiamat in the ocean, kind of, which is very weird considering that's her, like, home field. I don't know, it was shallow, I suppose. The game's called Kong, so of course he won. Well, there's more. Kong's survival instinct storyline includes a shocking revelation that dictates that Godzilla will potentially fight sea serpents once again. And yes, that's serpents, plural here. Oh. Let us explain. The story of Kong's survival instinct is an interesting one. In the game, we learned that shortly after the events of Godzilla vs. Kong, that being in 2024, Alan Jonah was still at large and was the head of a mercenary group known as Hyenas. These folks specialized in the black market trade of organic remains of titans and other sorts of megafauna. Throughout the story, we learn that these guys managed to capture a specimen that would hold great importance to this one, Tiamat. Who are we talking about? Ladies and gents, we are talking about Lahamu, the offspring of Titanus Tiamat. That's right, Lady Tiamat is officially a mother now, and Lahamu now joins the ranks of Monsterverse Kaiju. Lady In this Tiamat. story, Lahamu is still relatively small by Titan standards, Whoa. measuring possibly around 90 to 100 feet in length. That's actually insane. You don't see nearly this great a detail of the creature in the game. This is It's beautiful. It looks so little and derpy. I hope they get that freaking control collar off it, though. Given that titans in this game are scaled at a smaller size, that being so they can interact better with the human characters and fit on screen, it's possible that any official size of Lahamu may surpass the 100-foot range. Regardless of this, it is the physical attributes of Lahamu that make it more interesting. It is mentioned in the game that Lahamu does have a striking resemblance to Titanus Tiamat. And after a bit, we do get confirmation that yes, this is indeed Tiamat's daughter. Additionally, according to the mythological origins of Lahamu, the Mesopotamian goddess Tiamat was said to have two offspring, one being Lamu, the son, and Lahamu, the daughter. Ooh, interesting. In game, Lahamu, although being Tiamat's daughter, does differ in some way or form. If we look closely at both of these specimens, Lahamu differs in that she is not the same coloration as her mother at this point in time, with silver scales in body color and different colored fins. Her tongue, unlike her parents, splay out like petals, and this one only has one pair of appendages, unlike her mother who has four. Now, there is probably some explanation as to why she looks different. I figured it was like a tadpole thing. Like, I assumed she would just kind of develop more limbs and stuff later on as she developed, basically like a tadpole, but I don't know. If we take into account Tiamat in her previous form before she evolved, we see a resemblance to both of these, that being its coloration and types of fins. Meaning that whenever Tiamat gave birth to Lahamu, the offspring may have adopted physical characteristics of both Tiamat's evolved and previous form. Oh, but trippy! this is just the beginning. This one, however, mutated enough to take in other additional properties. It is mentioned in-game in Lahamu's creature profile that this one has advanced camouflage capabilities, allowing her to be borderline invisible. But some of you may be thinking, how is a juvenile Lahamu going to threaten Godzilla? I feel so stupid for not reading her entire thing in the game. It was like a seven hour game. I beat it in one sitting. I, was, I wasn't reading stuff by the end, unfortunately. Surely even an invisible sea serpent would still be detected by an overly sensitive alpha titan with alternative ways to detect other kaiju. And plus, Tiamat is 100% confirmed to be dead after Godzilla turned her into sliced sashimi in the Arctic. Ah! Well, about that. Going back to MonsterVerse Declassified, there's still a part of the story we have to tell you guys about. Woo! The beginning of the chapter that depicts Tiamat actually begins with a monarch scientist that arrives on the site where Tiamat had just been executed. 
She takes a sample of this titan's remains, and after another time jump in the book, we are taken to a post-GXK scene in an underground Hollow Earth facility underneath the energy stockpile, where another shocking revelation is introduced. In an analysis lab, the sample taken by the monarch scientist is revealed to have a 0% rate of decay. What is this? Let's find out. For you to fully comprehend how crazy this is and how serious this problem will get for Godzilla, here's what rate of decay means. Put very simply, rate of decay refers to how quickly something diminishes or rots over time. In physics and biology, it's used to describe how quickly a radioactive substance will lose its energy and mass. The metric used to show rate of decay is half-life. If you grab a piece of Titan tissue, for instance, and it has a half-life of five years, it means that in five years, only half of the radiation in this Titan tissue will remain. After another five years, then only a quarter of the energy will be left. I took it way too literally. I thought it was like the rate at which the flesh decays. I'm an idiot. And so on. Here, Tiamat's remains show signs of zero decay, meaning that this stuff is still radioactive. And in this universe, this means that whatever body parts can be salvaged, it's still viable to be able to clone or regenerate. And what do we have here? After Godzilla once again decapitated another Titan, Monarch was able to recover yet another head left behind by the G-Man. Bro, I'd love to see a movie just about how the hell they get that head inside that container. You know what I mean? Do they have robots to do it? It's clearly very heavy. I would love to see the schematics behind this. This time hinting at the fact that the conflict between Tiamat and her species is not over yet. So, where was Lahamu when Godzilla barged into her mother's lair and killed her? We don't have any confirmation about Lahamu's whereabouts as of now, but it is possible that as Godzilla was fighting Tiamat in the icy waters, Lahamu was able to barely make her escape. That, or she would have matured enough to not rely on her mother's protection in the events of GXK. That's sort of what I thought, because even in the game, she does seem kind of independent. She's seen swimming away with her mother at the very end here. But throughout the whole game, like whenever you see her, she's pretty pissed off just attacking the cage and looking very much not like a helpless child. If Lahamu is alive post-GXK, there is no doubt that Lahamu will search for vengeance. And if this Tiamat does somehow regenerate, or if a clone is developed, Godzilla will not only have to worry about a vengeful titan, but potentially the wrath of a reproducing species. That's pretty sweet. He's got it coming. Pretty messed up what he did to Tiamat. What everyone's favorite sea monster in the MonsterVerse. You could have just let her leave her home. He insta-killed her. I don't know, I guess. We all know she had it coming. Godzilla had to do what he had to do. But it's just, we don't have a lot of sea monsters in the franchise. So it's nice to see they had plans to at least return Tiamat. Because she was insane before. She was like incredibly powerful. To be just dispersed that quickly. I think everyone was a little shocked by that. Either way, this is a good video and a good summary of everything that was covered in that game and such. It is a little worrisome because Toho could easily just be like, yeah, you know, now we really don't want this to be canon anymore. And then it's not like they've done that multiple times already, which is kind of heartbreaking. But hopefully this just remains. This has nothing to do with Godzilla firsthand. So hopefully it just remains untouched. Either way is a very interesting video. I'm just happy Tiamat's back because she's beautiful. I just hope we get some like SH Arts or like Spiral Studios figures of Tiamat. That'd be beautiful. Either way, though, leave a like on the video for more Kaiji stuff. Subscribe to Goji Center, obviously, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>